you want to get the most out of your MX1 mixer, you've come to the right place. Welcome to Wild Boy Workshop. I'm here to help you get the most out of your gear. Oh, that sounded cheesy. Anyway, I've done it now. Um, yeah, I'm going to hopefully do like one takes rather than doing loads of crazy editing. Um, yeah, so basically I'm going to be starting regular videos answering your questions and giving you tips and tricks on how to use all this hardware, how to do it in a doorless environment, as well as if anyone's got any questions about how to produce music in the computer, no problems, I'm here to make the videos and help you out. So, I've had a few questions on how to, how I connect all my gear. Um, so I thought I'd start with the audio side of things and show you how I route it all to the MX-1 and how I get the most out of it. Let's go. Okay, let's take you to the MX-1. You can see I've written down um, each of the machines on each of the channels, so when I'm playing live I can make sure I'm using the right knobs and sliders quickly. Um, so yeah, let's start over here at channel 1. Uh, you've got four audio channels on the MX-1. They can either be uh, mono or you can have them paired, so two stereo channels. Uh, I've got them in mono. Um, so the first channel is actually coming from the TRITS. Uh, just the kick, so on the TRITS you can separate the channels. Um, so I've got one um, channel which is for the kick, uh, and I like that because it gives you full control over the kick, uh, level wise and sound wise. And um, yeah, uh, it's it's a fundamental part of the music, so it has its own channel. Um, the second channel is the uh, the rest of the TRITS drums, uh, all the way from a snare drum through to the ride cymbal. And um, that actually comes out another mono channel and goes into the Decker Strymon. Um, it's actually a two channel a sort of dual mode setup. You can take the back off and there's pins where you can switch over and turn it to different modes. This mode is for dual channels, so they're separate. Um, so yeah, that gives a little bit of saturation or as much as you want um, into the second channel on the MX-1. The third channel is the 303, so I've got the old TB3 emulator emulation here, and uh, yeah, I, I love it. It's, a, it's really versatile, sounds great, and that also goes through the uh, Decker Strymons using the second channel um, before it goes into the third mono channel of the MX1. I'm keeping channel 4 uh, for the live elements of my music. Um, I'm going to be using a loop station, I've just got the new Mark II, which I'm going to be doing a video on soon, um, and that's going to be um, having inputs from my monopoly, uh, my trumpet, my guitar, and some vocals. Right, so on to the next channel. Now this is a stereo channel, and the input actually is just a 3.5mm jack, rather than the quarter inch jack with the other four. And that is for my black box, uh, where I trigger longer um, takes of um, improvisation that I've done on synthesizers that aren't in this setup. Uh, as well as effects and other things. Um, so that's really cool. Um, and then the virus. Now the virus um, actually has a digital out. So if you look up on the mixer there, I've actually got a coaxial digital out going on uh, in, in the virus over here. If you can see, it's got the SP diff out, um, if, it's, if it's in focus. Uh, and so yeah, the digital output goes straight into the MX-1 and yeah, that works flawlessly. It's never never done anything wrong, um, which is great. Now this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Uh, uh, the, the next um, three channels are actually USB inputs uh, and you can see I've got USB stuff going on up there. So uh, the first is the Digitone. So if I take you over to the Digitone, here you have the Digitone. Now, let's get that out of the way. So Digitone's an awesome FN synthesizer and it keeps surprising me with what you can do. It's just really versatile. I, thoroughly recommend it as a, um, I don't know, even a first synthesizer or like if you want a hardware synthesizer, I would say this one is definitely on your list of things to try out. Um, yeah, so I've got stereo out audio of the Digitone going into this Roland Torquedo Eurorack module, which is a distortion module. Now the reason I've got it um, is not more really for its sound, although it is useful. Um, I've actually, it's got a USB output which uh, works with the USB inputs of the MX-1. So that goes straight into one of the USB inputs on the MX-1. So that's the dig Digitone. And then next to that, I've actually got the Digitax. Um, now the way I've done that is a bit different. 
Um, so if we go to here, we've got the Digitax, which is an awesome bit of gear. Um, I'm using it slightly differently to how it generally is used on its own because I'm sequencing it separately um, using the Squarp. But anyway, that's a separate <laughs> video. This is all about the audio channel. So I've got stereo out again, but the stereo out actually go into the TR8S. Um, now the TR8S has got an external in and I'm using that to go straight out of its USB. Now the USB on the TRITS has an output one and two. So you can um, use that either with all your sounds going straight to the MX1, but what I'm doing actually is I'm using it as a way of getting my Digitac sounds through the TRITS into the MX1. Sounds crazy, I know, <laughs> but that's where the way I've done it. Now, one of the things um, that I don't use that much of it are the, the effects in the TRITS. And that, the reason for that is, is because of the way I've set the audio up here. Um, I would like to use um, the reverb and delay a bit more, but the outputs of those are only on stereo one and two, annoyingly, rather than being, you, you can't change where they're sent to. They only come out on one and two. So I, I don't tend to use them. Um, I think that's another video again. So yeah, um, overall, that's how I connect the MX-1. Um, the only other thing to talk about is it has got some auxiliary send and returns. Um, so what I'm doing there is I'm sending the signal from the MX-1 to the virus, um, because the virus actually has got three sets of outputs and a, and a stereo input. Um, so I use the virus in a multi-mode and then on one of the channels, on one of the 16 MIDI channels, I've got it set up so um, I'm just using its delay and reverb, uh, which are awesome. Um, I would say, okay, it's not maybe it's not as good as the Blue Sky, for example, but it's got a really nice infinite reverb on it, uh, and the delays are great, and, and, and they work really well. So it's a great um, way to save on um, you know in effect, effects units by using um, its multi timbral capabilities. Um, so yeah, that's how I get some send and return effects into the MX-1. And obviously it's got its own effects too. I mean, I do use the, the delay, um, sometimes the scatter a bit. I mean, the other ones, uh, yeah, it's got the combi thing, which is fun, um, but I don't tend to use it very often. Um, I do sometimes use the slicer on audio inputs that makes um, for a change on what you're doing on some of the long notes synth stuff. Um, and also the sidechain, I sometimes use that, but not very often. To be honest, I sort of try and get the mix to work without the sidechain going on. And then if I'm using sidechain, it's because I want that particular effect that's more obvious than just a bit of sidechaining. So, there you have it. That's the MX-1 and how I connect all the audio together. So, I hope you found that video helpful. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe so um, you can see any new videos that are coming out uh, as and when they do. I'm planning on doing one a week, um, answering your questions as and when they come in. Um, so yeah, take care. Until next time.